On D-Day in June 1944, NCDU teams landed on the Normandy beaches. Under heavy fire, they set off demolition charges, blowing up obstacles that weighed tons. From the ranks of these men who would become D-Day heroes, Admiral Turner recruited the Navy's new underwater demolition teams, or UDTs. Whereas the NCDUs operated from boats run up onto shore, the UDTs were combat swimmers, dropped by boats offshore to conduct underwater reconnaissance and obstacle demolition. An ambitious task, for which they were very lightly equipped. We had bathing suits, knives, life preservers, and a face mask. That's basically it. They went into combat almost naked, but the UDTs could deliver an awesome punch. They used the Hagensen Pack, a small bag containing high explosives used for destroying coral outcrops and beach defenses. Hagensen was the name of a Navy lieutenant who devised a pack which held eight blocks of tetratol, each block weighing two and a half pounds, so the pack carried 20 pounds of explosive. To detonate, the tetratol needed to be ignited with Primacord, an explosive cord that burnt at 3,000 feet per second. A good length of safety fuse attached to the Primacord ensured that the UDTs had enough time to escape the Hagensen Pack's huge explosion. You always wanted to be pretty sure and attach a little more safety cord than you really thought it might take you. The explosions usually set up a plume of water three to 400 feet high. The concussion would be felt even a 1,000 feet away. Across the Pacific Theater, UDT teams surveyed beach landing zones from under the water, blew channels through rock and coral, and destroyed beach defenses. Their actions sealed the success of Marine Corps beach assaults right up to the invasion of Okinawa in April 1945. After seeing action in Korea during the 1950s, the UDTs were scaled down. But new enemies lay just over the horizon, ones that will require the United States to rethink its methods of waging war. These enemies were the communist guerrillas. The guerrilla was a new enemy, one that couldn't be hit by fire and maneuver, the traditional methods used by major land forces. To combat these forces, President Kennedy declared that America would have its own unconventional forces. In the Navy, the unconventional forces were the Navy SEALs. President Kennedy officially commissioned the SEALs in 1962. SEAL stood for Sea, Air, and Land. Their mission, to fight hostile, unconventional forces on the ground, wherever they might be in the world. Like their ancestors in World War II, the newly formed SEALs would have to operate and survive in water. To carry out missions from beneath the surface, they adopted rebreathers. Rebreathers allow a diver to breathe underwater. They work like a simple recycling system. When the diver exhales, his breath goes into a canister containing a lime-based chemical. The lime scrubs the carbon dioxide from the breath, converting it back to oxygen. The recycled air is topped off with a small amount of oxygen stored in a compressed gas cylinder, making it available for the diver to breathe again. In essence, it's an extension of the lung and he rebreathes his own air, utilizing the soft and lime material inside the canister. And the most important part about it is there's no exhale of bubbles or no external bubbles come out of the system. Rebreathers have a distinct stealth advantage over open circuit systems, where the diver breathes compressed gases. Open circuit systems vent large amounts of bubbles into the water, but rebreathers release very few. Bubbles breaking the surface of the water are the telltale sign to any sentry that a submerged swimmer is approaching. If you're standing on a pier or on deck of a ship, 
when you see bubbles come up alongside the ship, you know you got a swimmer in the water. You scream out, swimmer in the water. Swimmer in the water! People that heard it would start grabbing a hand grenade. And if you've ever been to water, when a small hand grenade goes off, it's like sticking an egg beater up your butt and putting a wild man on a crank. It will bring you to the surface. 